Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Here we are, another day at the Good Morning World HQ. What is on the script? Right, so another video, another day. Mm. How's your morning been? I've not quite woken up yet, I'll be honest. Yeah, a bit tired. I slept really well last night, though. Yeah? No one meowed. He's, at, he's being really good in the night now, Edgar. It's because he sleeps in our room. Next to the fan. Next to the fan, yeah. We, uh, are you thinking about letting him out tonight? Today? Today, yeah. Another little outing for Edgar. You're a bit like a nervous parent. Yeah, because like, the garden isn't really like cat-proofed. But I feel bad keeping him in. Yeah. Because he like howls at the door. Yeah, he wants to explore, doesn't well, he? Well, he was a stray, so he's used to being outside. Yeah. Because the other day when we let him out, he disappeared for like 10 minutes, came back, disappeared for like another five and then came back again and then I gave him some food and brought him back in. So if I can do like a similar thing today, I'll be happy. Yeah, I think he'll be fine. I think he's uh, he survived on his own for 18 months. Yeah, he was, he was, yeah. You're doing a quiz tonight? What about that? Yeah, I've got to finish it. You're but... doing a quiz, a board game quiz? Yeah, board games. Any uh, any uh, questions you can throw out there? Get him. Um, what is the name of the victim in Cluedo? Or Clue, if you're American. We call it Cluedo. Yeah. And also, like, how many rooms are they? Because I got this wrong. So how many rooms are there in Cluedo? Well, let's get this party started, as they say. This email, again, guys, thanks for the emails. Lovely emails. Beautiful emails. Um, all sorts of stuff going on. But yeah, really good. Um, so this email is from someone called Charlie. Uh, Charlie Taylor. And they said, um, any advice on how to deal with mental health issues like anxiety in musical theatre? Mm. My passion is theatre and my dream is to get to the West End one day or even Broadway. However, sometimes I feel like my anxiety is stopping me in ways. So yes, do you have any advice at all? Thank you. I'm going to quickly say that I've never really experienced anxiety like being being a swing before mm. like that was the first time i actually felt anxiety like big time because being a swing does give you anxiety because you don't know if, when you're on mm. or what track you're on for and there's so much pressure for when you go on for it to be right mm. and everything before then before being a swing i never covered before and I just played like parts, I just played a role. Um, so I never experienced that sort of thing of going, being in a show and thinking, if that lead actor falls all over now, or like in, in between shows, gets a, a you know, tummy ache and goes off, I'm on. Mm. And uh, then to have that nine times over because you cover nine people. Yeah. And also being at home, like, like today, and then knowing that my phone can ring at any point going, yeah. you're on for the lead or you're on for this track you've never done. Yeah. It's only when I look back at my time, um, I'm like, oh my God, I was really anxious mm. all the time. And that's why I'd never be a swing again. Yeah. Because I can do it and I was pretty good at it. I never really messed up or anything like that. Went on, did my job well. But for my brain and for my own sort of mental health, it's not a good so a place to be on edge yeah. all the time. That not knowing would drive me crazy. For like two years. Yeah. And also being a swing, there's so much pressure to go on and nail it, because mm. then it means you're good at your job. Because then people go, oh, well, he's always good. Mm. And it becomes like something you lust after, or want to achieve, yeah. and you want to be good at being a swing because not everyone can do it. So when you're on for a track you're not doing in years, you're like, you put this massive pressure on you and then then the anxiety that it starts be hours before the show. Yeah. Yeah, really crazy. Have you ever experienced any any anxiety before? Well, for me it's slightly different because I want to specify the difference between being anxious and having anxiety. Yeah. And I have anxiety. Yeah. Um, so my levels of anxiety are like, almost a constant, but they started from things that 
are like attached to my job as opposed to my job. Yeah. Because my job, like being on stage and singing and rehearsing and performing, that's where I feel the most comfortable. Yeah. But it's everything that then is attached to the job, like the pressure from fans to be as good as the person who came before you, um, the expectation to be like a role model mm. for young, a, a young generation of actors who are going through drama school right now or people who just love musical theatre and like massive crowds at stage door that was where it like stemmed from for me like massive yeah. crowds at stage door and when stage door was like so uncontrolled and it was just like huge crowds of people all shouting your name mm. and all trying to like grab you and then things getting like out of control that's yeah. like where it all came from for me when i talk about anxiety it comes from a slightly different place than like being anxious because of a situation, but it's like temporary. Mm -hmm. For me, I have like a, a monitored level of being anxious like all of the time, which I never used to be like. Yeah. I think I've always been a very nervous person and a very worried person, but I don't think I would have ever described myself as like, especially when I got into like my early twenties, I wasn't an anxious person at all. No. And then I hit like 25 and everything went to hell. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's because your audience grew. I mean, because the ex expectation and, and the stuff that you could control, you couldn't really control anymore. Yeah, everything was like manageable Yeah. at that point where like I was doing a job that I knew I was like really good at. Like, I was playing Eponine, which is a role that I felt like I had like trained myself to play for my entire life because it had been my like life's goal to play that role. Mm. And I had an audience small enough so that everyone was quite like, I kind of would, like, I'd recognise people, I'd know who these, these people were coming to Stage Door because I'd seen their usernames or we'd chatted on Twitter and, like, it was a, a nice, I mean, I say small, it was like 100,000 people, but it felt manageable, like, I felt like I was yeah. on top of it. And then my audience started to grow and then I started to play roles that were sort of more challenging, like... Wednesday Adams and Veronica Sawyer and even Fontaine to an extent like I started playing roles and there was like more of an expectation and as my audience grew there was too many people that I could like stay on top of yeah and with that stage door grew as well yeah for me the conversation of anxiety gives me anxiety yeah <laughs> and like makes me really nervous I think it all stems from things you can't control. I feel like you're not in your, are not in your control. Yeah. So Charlie said, like, how would you deal with it? And in in my example, because I don't really suffer from anxiety. You're a very like calm, yeah. chilled out, whatever happens happens no. type person. I but I would say that the, in that time in Mormon I did, or it was, or I felt anxious at least. Mm. I had this like level of anxiousness or whatever. Yeah. It was it was definitely ran through those two years. Mm. Charlie has said like, how'd you deal with it? So in my situation, the only way you can deal with anxiety being a swing or being a cover or or anything like that, or even just doing a job I guess, is to know your stuff. Mm. And it sounds really stupid, but like control the things you can control that yeah. makes sense yeah, yeah so if i'm thinking in my head like when i got that call saying i was on for my fourth cover like i was like oh my god like and i had to go home and like practice mm. so that was my controlling that's how i tried to control it i knew the stuff pretty well but i went i cancelled my plans that day and i went home i thought like, i need to go home because i'm on for my fourth cover tonight mm. bye went home got my ipad sat there for two hours and ran the whole show as yeah. that part and that, at that point, was the only thing I could control. Mm. Um, so that sort of helped, yeah. I guess. So that would be my only advice, I guess, if you're a swing or a cover. Just know your stuff. Yeah. Because you're going to get that call when you're not expecting it, going, yeah. you're on for this person. And if they've been paying you week in, week out to be a swing or to be a cover, they expect you to go on and do it, mm. you know? You can't be like, oh, I don't actually know that. Yeah. They'd be like, get on. Yeah. <laughs> and just wing it there, because you're on. Yeah, last year my anxiety got like to the worst it's ever been and so I started having counselling sessions and the thing that I discovered through having those sessions is that 
there are so many things that I know logically and practically that are true, but the way I feel is completely different. So even if I know something to be true, it won't matter because my feelings and how I feel at that time will completely override it. For me, it was like trying to balance how I felt and what I knew and trying to let my logical side, as opposed to my emotional side, take over. Have you ever like suffered from anxiety like for auditions though? Or has it just been like when you're in the performance? Because I know I have. Like, yeah. When I, like, I think back to like times when I've like suffered from or felt anxious at least about an audition. But it was like, it felt stronger than just being uh, nervous or anything mm. like that. And I think it's because, and we spoke about this before, it was the level of material I got yeah. sent. And I remember like sitting in my room with like five pages of script, two songs and whatever. And I had like two days to do it. Mm. And that sounds like a lot, but it's not to do a good job of that amount of material. Yeah. And I remember just sitting in my room thinking, I don't want to go to this audition. And I think I did in the end. Um, but I guess, again, the only thing you can do is try to control what you can control. Yeah. Um, I did go to the audition, but there were points where I was going to call my agent and be like, hey, listen, I, I don't feel good about yeah. this. Because I don't want to go in to this audition and be terrible. Yeah. And the 48 hours beforehand, I'm feeling like, like this. Because yeah. I know I've got all this work to do in this amount of time. Yeah. And I'm going to go into a panel and look terrible. Um, if that happened again in my life, and it was an over, I, it, it, obviously I came over it and, and went over the hill and, mm. and managed to control and suppress the anxiety enough to feel like I, I can do the audition. Mm. But I guess, my, again, advice would be if you ever feel you put in that position, um, don't do it. If it's better for your mental health mm. to not suffer for 48 hours before an audition and do an audition that you're probably yeah. not ready for or happy to be in. Yeah. Just call your agent and they will, if they're a good agent, they'll understand. Yeah. Um, if they don't understand and start calling you all the names under the sun and say, you're wasting my time, tell them that yeah, they're yeah. wasting your time, you yeah. know? Like, cause they're not the people you want to be with. They're not the people, they're not the people who should like, who should be representing you. Yeah. Um, I've never canceled an audition due to anxiety. Um, but I've been close and also I know that I would if I have to yeah and it, for me anxiety in auditions it's not so much doing it I'm, f I'm fine with that it'll be the material mm. that will get me down or get me like in a place where I can't I'm looking at words and they're not going in because yeah. my, my heart's pounding I'm like I can't I won't be able to do this yeah because I also for me I try to be the best I can be at every given opportunity I don't go in half arse and be like, oh, you'd be fine. I want to be good. Yeah. So I put the pressure on myself. It's the same when I said about being a swing. Like, I want people to go, oh, that guy's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my advice, I guess, for auditions. Yeah. I think for me, the thing that helps me when I've done auditions is that I always remember how I feel after I've come out of an audition. Mm. When I'm like, oh, I wish I could go back in now. And yeah. like with the knowledge that it was fine and that I will make it through and even if it goes wrong, what's the worst that's gonna happen? Yeah. Like, you know, I won't get the job, but, mm. or, or you might still get the job if you're still the best person to audition that day, but it's always just the knowledge that I will be okay. And mm. I will come out of that audition going, I wish I hadn't have been so yeah. worried and nervous and anxious before going in so yeah. that I could have done a better job. So I kind of try and remind myself of that before I'm going in. Yeah. And also reminding myself that the panel want me to be good. They're not there to like try and trip me up and yeah. they don't want to watch me fall flat on my face. I'm less anxious about auditions than I am doing like one-off concerts. I hate it. One-off concerts? One-off concerts, I can't. Because it's like, you know too far in advance. Because at least with an audition, they might call you up two days before, or even like the day before and be yeah. like, you've got an audition. I'd be like, right, well, that's only like a couple of days of like being a nervous wreck. Yeah. Whereas if you know you've got a concert coming up, that's like months worth of that in the back of your mind going, oh my God, I've got that thing, I've got that thing, I've got that thing coming up. 
So, and it's like a one-off performance as well. So if you screw it up on that night, it's not like a show where you can, it's okay because you've got the next seven shows of the week yeah. to go. And also in an audition, you've got like, I mean, in just like a first round audition, you've got maybe four at most on the panel. Yeah. So it's kind of like quite a calm, chilled environment. But at a concert, it's like thousands of people and the pressure is on. And you've got that one chance to nail it. And if you don't nail it, all those thousands of people are going to go home and tell everyone that mm. you were crap. Auditions I'm much better with than concerts like that. Like even like Leave a Light On, all those I've been asked to do one of them and I've not replied to the email. <laughs> it's still sat in my inbox because yeah. I just can't, I can't bet. That's not even in front of an audience. That's on a live stream and I just can't, I can't bring myself to do it. Well, it's the same as the when I said about calling your agent and being like, I'm being careful of your own mental health. It's the same sort of premise. Mm. Like by going, I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to put myself through that mm. and not replying and not accepting these concerts. You're like looking after yourself. So I yeah. guess that is the main thing. Like looking after yourself, yeah. knowing what you can do or what is good for you. Yeah. So, you know, by me calling an agent and going, I can't do this audition because of this, that and that, mm. and I don't feel good about it, put the phone down or whatever. Yeah. That's like me being like, protecting my, my yeah. own heart and my own mind. And by you doing that, I guess you're doing the same. Yeah. When you're going, these concerts are coming out and go, do you want to sing this song? Do you want to sing this song in three weeks time? Yeah, and really if, the gain, if the gain is not as much as like, what it takes out of you, it's yeah. not worth it. My mum used to joke when I was younger, when I used to live with my parents and I was like in Les Mis and doing concerts at left, right and centre and stuff. Because back then I used to say yes to everything because I felt like that's what was like expected. Because mm. whilst back then I wasn't as anxious as I am now, when it came to concerts, I feel like the level of anxiety was is exactly the same as it was now. Mm. I've just never been okay with doing performances as myself, ever. Mm. And my mum used to joke that in the two weeks leading up to a concert, she'd have to like... Oh gosh. Same give me a white birth, stay away, because I was a nightmare. Because I was just so yeah. stressy and on edge and anxious. My trick for concerts, oh, is it not a trick, but what I tend to do when I do a concert and someone's like, do you want to sing a song? You, you can pick your song. I always pick a song which is fun. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's completely different to the empty concert world mm -hmm. where the first song is a contemporary song by an unknown artist mm -hmm. and it's like a tring, like really minor chord and then the first line's like my cat died today like it's like oh god like it's always like everything's down yeah. and down and belty and like it's all sad but then it has a big money note at the end yeah and i used to be i used to do that i used to love that I used to love that world but then I, then i thought why am i doing this Why put yourself so when stress? i when uh, we did a concert Mormon did a concert in where you did edges. Oh, the Delphont rooms. Yeah, yeah, the Delphont rooms downstairs. We did a concert. This like sort of it was a couple of years ago, about well, about five years ago, um, when this sort of group. I don't know who it was, but like, you, Les Mis might have done a concert down there. But they went around loads of musical theatre people in the West End. And was like, do you want to put a concert on after your performance tonight? That sounds familiar. Yeah, and Mormon did one. I did a rap, a musical theatre rap. And I, I, it was fun and everyone loved it, yeah. but it was just taking the mick out of myself. And yeah. I guess that's my advice, like, I think, if you, because you can get hung up on, if you're singing against people who like, you know, the, the Beverly Knights of the world and yeah. Dina Menzel or whatever, like these massive names and you're at this concert, just do a bit of some, do some do fun. Do something completely different. Just yeah. do something fun, you know, just some, try, if you are in that position where you, you, you said yes and you're like, oh God, mm. I feel really nervous now. Yeah. Maybe I remember um, doing a concert once where everyone was singing. I sang Pulled. Um, yeah, it's good one. Someone sang Not My Father's Son from Kinky Boots. Like it was yeah. all like very like big, belty, passionate songs. And then I think it was Maria Coyne came on and sang Taylor the Latte Boy, which is like a really funny, yeah. like good, <coughs> silly song. Yeah. And then in the second act, Oliver Savile came on as Taylor the Latte Boy and sang uh, the, the like reply. the rebuttal, the reply, yeah. yeah. And it was like, I think that was like my favourite performances of the night because it was that like fun, completely different thing from everyone else belting their tits off. 
from like the Scott Allens of the world. Love Scott Allen, but like that sort of yeah. like yeah, everything's really dark and serious and serious. high and belty. Yeah, it was like, and as soon as he sang the opening line, everyone was like, oh my god. Like, yeah. loved it. I think I'm the worst person to ask about dealing with anxiety because I do not deal with my anxiety. But it's good to hear though that yeah. it's good to talk about it anyway because people and, might not know. Yeah, and I think you'd be surprised at how many people do suffer with not just anxiety but just mental health issues within the world of musical theatre because it is a very high pressure mm. job which I don't think a lot of people think of it as being because it's putting on silly costumes mm. and prancing about stage and singing a few songs and how hard could that be? But when you've got the pressure of thousands of people watching and you've got the pressure of a company making sure that mm. you, you know, you're you doing the best that you possibly can every night and then when you get ill, the feeling like you're disappointing you're not just your audience but your cast as well and the company and then if you're in a show that's got like few, few covers or no covers, you're then getting pressure from higher up to come back even though you're yeah. ill and it's like, it's a lot and it can get a lot. Mm. I think it'd be rare to find a musical theatre performer who doesn't suffer in some way with mental yeah. health issues. However, that's never stopped any of us. On that point, I'm just thinking why it's so like prominent in musical theatre. It's because it's the things that, because it's going back to the thing of things you can't control. Yeah. And there's so much in musical theatre that actors don't have a say in or don't control. Yeah. You know, the only thing we can control is our performance, I guess. Mm. And even then, sometimes that betrays you if your yeah. voice isn't like, you're, you're on a day where you're a little bit ill and your voice yeah. cracks. Yeah. Or your voice does something that you didn't expect it to because you're, you know, you didn't warm up properly mm. or you are a little bit ill. Um, so yeah, to wrap it up, my only advice, I guess, going back to Mormon, and that's when I would say I was the most anxious, is to know your stuff. Try to know your stuff as well as you possibly can. So if, Charlie, if you've got a concert or you're doing a dance piece or whatever's coming up in your life, mm -hmm. and you're feeling the anxiety, just try and uh, know your stuff, I guess. Yeah, and, prepare and as much prepare as Prepare as much as you can, and then your mindset will probably just change a bit and lighten because mm. you might be like, I know this. Yeah. I've got nothing to worry about. Because um, if you know that and you don't have to worry about, the, say, the choreography or the singing or whatever, the acting, mm. you know the script, then that piece of your brain just sort of relaxes a bit. And yeah. You, you can think of other stuff rather than splitting it everywhere and going, yeah. I don't know the script, I don't know my choreography, I don't know my lines, I don't, you know, da 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 da, yeah. da. If you know it, If you know all the material, you can like throw that out and go, right, I know that. Now I just need to worry about the staging. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, maybe that's my own only piece of advice. Yeah. yeah. And I think my advice would just be to know that you aren't alone. You aren't the only one who deals with those kind of issues. Yeah. And there are people who are on the West End and even Broadway who are dealing with the same kind of things oh, yeah. and they are as successful as they are. They're, they're the people that you are looking up to in this industry. Yeah, so it's not like... It's not impossible. It's not a hindrance to have anxiety. Yeah. It's just like, it's something you just learn to live with, I guess. Yeah, and learn to deal with, yeah. Yeah, it's not like you're going to fall at the first hurdle if you want to be a musical theatre performer. Yeah. It's just something you need to like, saddle up, yeah. put it on your back and go, let's go. Yeah. Isn't that right, Edgar? Right, one, that's that. Uh, sort of anxiety, a tiny bit of mental health, but we'll probably expand. It's a, it's a big topic. Yeah. And we only just scratch the surface. Um, but yeah, so thanks for popping by everyone, it's been emotional, be safe out there, don't, don't let your mind demons control you. That's a good one. We can do it together, by talking and living and loving. Bye everyone!